four rushing touchdown performance against LSU. Kentucky won the toss. They elect to defer. Only two wins all time does Kentucky have against Bama. The last right here back in 1997. Kendrick Law back to receive the chance for kickoff. And this is Williams from inside the five. And Williams struggling to get back to the 20 yard line. As welcome back to solid ground, Jordan Rogers. Hey, Maverick, I like the look. Hey, you know, man. once you're in a Black Hawk helicopter, you get to be in the aviator family for good. Glad you're with us. Jesse Palmer finishing up some ABC duty. So Jordan joins us in the booth once again. Um, the Kentucky defense has quite the challenge against Milrow today. No doubt. And they play a lot of zone cover. So a lot of eyes will be on Jalen Milrow. But watch Trevin Wallace and De'Eric Jackson, two linebackers for Kentucky, that have to make sure he doesn't run all over the place like we saw last week against LSU. A more decisive runner now indeed at this point of the season and here is Milrow to open up the game extending the play and this is where he's most dangerous as he was tracked down from behind by J.J. Weaver. Yeah, and a matchup to watch that left tackle, Caden Proctor. A little early pressure on Jalen Milrow, but does what he does best, picking up some yards when the play breaks down. Five-yard run by Milrow. Jason McClellan in the backfield for the tie. And he will get the handoff here. And only able to garner three yards as the Eric Jackson makes the tackle. Katie. Tess, unfortunately for Alabama, Jermaine Burton, wide receiver, woke up, was not feeling well, so he will miss today's game. He is a talented offensive weapon, not in the arsenal for Alabama's offense today. Now on the other side, you see that Andrew Phillips is out defensively for Kentucky, and they're going to miss him, Jordan. Well, and Jermaine Burton was the go-to guy on third down situations like this right here. So who does that become? A Kendrick Law, a Malik Benson. Let's see who they start to target. Third down and three. McClellan straight ahead, and with that drive, he picks up the first down. And this will be the story, right? Talking to Mark Stoops yesterday, he mentioned physicality. That's something we have to match this Alabama team for four quarters. Starts up front for this Kentucky defensive line, all behind Deion Walker, one of the best defensive linemen in the entire country, number zero. Keep an eye on him up front. But the trenches are going to dictate this game. Listen, physicality is what Mark Stoops' teams have been known through the years with. Matching up against Bam on this version. A little bit of a bigger task. Milrow going to check down to McClellan out of the backfield. And he's able to get a few yards before he's met by the very athletic Trevin Wallace. Boy, again, second time dialing up a pass play for Tommy Reese in this offense. Second time, a little bit of pressure. That time on the right side of the offensive line from J.J. Weaver. Adamari Nyblak open, actually, on a deep over route. But Kentucky early getting a lot of pressure on number four. Second and six, Milrow has to cut back against the green, and that is exactly what we talk about in terms of being a decisive runner. When he squares the shoulders, he's upfield. You see him limping and favoring his left leg. Boy, again, watch the flow of these linebackers over the top. Yeah, see, he sticks his foot in the ground, gets north and south, but might have taken a hit, a shot right to the thigh. The end of that play, look at this. As soon as he decides to get north and south, nobody more dangerous than Milrow. But watch the end of that play, right on that left thigh. I've been hit there before, too, and it is, you, you can't feel your entire leg. It's like a Charlie horse on steroids. You get hit right in that IT band, right on the left side, outside of that quad. It just, it's tough to put any weight on the leg there if that's indeed what happened. It was Ty Bryant, the freshman safety for Kentucky who met him, and now you see Ty Simpson, the redshirt freshman quarterback, warming up. Jalen Milrow, who is as hot as any player in college football in recent weeks, and you see his mom, Lola, and his dad, Quinton. They are concerned as they look on, and coming off by far the best game of his career. 
The single game record for touchdowns by an Alabama quarterback had 155 yards rushing last week against LSU. Yeah, and this, this offense has completely changed starting really that Texas A&M week as you see Milrow get up, still a little gimpy on that left leg. But they have started to win because of Jalen Milrow, not with Jalen Milrow. And I think that's been the difference, adapting the offense around him to fit his strengths. But now with a pocket passing quarterback coming in, got to go back to some of that offense that that you started the season with. So Ty Simpson in at quarterback on this opening drive. Ty Simpson, who in week three was the third string quarterback, came off the bench to rally Alabama for the win at USF. We'll give it to Williams, and much of that inside clogged up by that big defensive front of Kentucky. And Milrow comes right back out there, so takes the hit to the leg, absent for one play, and fortunately for Bama, Jalen's right back out there. I think the play calling the next couple plays will tell you a lot about how they feel, where he's at. Is he back close to 100%? Can he take off on some of those runs? Milrow gets it to Williams out of the backfield. Williams met immediately that time by Maxwell Hairston. Nice little quick throw, try to get him back in rhythm. And a big third down here for Kentucky's defense. Trying to get some momentum early, get this crowd into it. Third and four. Milrow with time. Goes to the outside and gets it complete to Prentice. First down tied. Oh, and a great job. Coming back to the ball here. Jace McClellan in the backfield. Watch the block by number two. Right up the middle. And then here is what I was mentioning. Kobe Prentice coming back to that ball so the defender can't cut that off. A timeout, S.E. Palmer and Katie George down on the field. Alabama wins the SEC West with a win here at Kentucky. Milrow took a big hit to the leg on that opening drive, came right back in after missing one play. A beautiful pass to Nyblak for the touchdown. Here is Brown from the goal line. Excellent special teams coverage by Bama near the 15-yard line. And it has been an up, down, and all around year for Kentucky quarterback Devin Leary. Was at his best a few weeks ago against Tennessee. Went for 372 yards. What will he offer up today? Well, he's been improving, right? The numbers showed it against Tennessee. They might not have showed it last week. Not huge numbers, but he's protecting the football, making better decisions. And just like Tommy Reese changing the offense for Milrow, Liam Cohen has adjusted a lot of this Kentucky offense to help Devin Leary play faster and more confident. He trimmed a lot of the inventory. They have this guy, Ray Davis, who keeps his balance out to the 21 yard line Ray Davis who comes in with 903 yards rushing and has the chance to be a thousand yard rusher at his third different school yeah you're seeing why he's second in the SEC and he averaging 6.1 yards per attempt because you can't bring him down with the first guy right he bounces off that first tackle his yards after contact are ridiculous one of the things Kevin Steele mentioned we got to bring him down with two or three guys Second and five, nothing there on the outside as Jihad Campbell makes the tackle. Jihad Campbell, who is in for Deontay Lawson, who's a very talented inside linebacker. So you look at the defense for Alabama, and they're without two key players. Jalen Key, the free safety, and Deontay Lawson, who really quarterbacks and makes the front calls for Nick Saban and Kevin Steele's defense. Yeah, that's why you worry about some of the play action that Kentucky does. Can they get behind these linebackers with a sail route or find a way to attack the middle of the field? And you see Caleb Downs showing pressure off the edge here. They're down in six. And they're able to get to Leary and then just thrown back by Chris.
Chris Braswell. Chris Braswell just ragdolled Devin Leary. Boy, great games. We mentioned Caleb Downs coming off the left side of the line of scrimmage, and they're going to loop the end here to provide the pressure on Leary. Great job knowing that Kentucky's going to have to push the ball downfield, and Braswell was right there to clean it up. Boy, this defense will throw so much at you in the pressure game. Wilson Berry from his own end zone, punting away Kool-Aid McKinstry at midfield could put the tide in prime position with field position for their second offensive possession instead it takes a big kentucky bounce this offense adapt and running the football with planned quarterback yes. runs especially to the perimeter which has been opening up passing lanes in recent weeks let's watch for it here play action milra look at the time he has and then is able to get it complete as he connects with Isaiah Bond, who leads the team in receptions. Katie. Tess, as expected, Jalen Milrow spent the entire Kentucky series in the medical tent receiving treatment. He came out, went through a couple of warm-ups, gave a big thumbs up to his teammates as he went back out on the field. Milrow six for six passing to open up this game. McClellan. He goes nowhere as big Dion Walker at 348 pounds, but yet elite mobility tracks him down. Yeah, another thing to note as Milrow continues to pick apart the secondary a little bit is no Andrew Phillips. Right, he's their field corner, so JQ Hardaway, big 6'3", 6'4", corner is going to be out there playing a lot of the field, was in on that last tackle. But again, no Jermaine Burt, but also Kentucky dealing with injuries in the secondary on the other side as well. Andrew Phillips is a big loss. He's an NFL caliber nickel in that defensive backfield for Kentucky. Jam Miller is the running back. Play action. Milrow will run here. And Milrow struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, there's J.Q. Hardaway. Just mentioned his name, filling in for Andrew Phillips, tackling on the perimeter. Didn't take him long to go back to a design quarterback run there for Milrow. Not sure he had the same burst as I'm used to seeing. No. Remember that hit to the left thigh on the opening series. And now a third and 12. Three man rush. They drop eight against Milrow. Lofts it downfield. Wide open and score it. Tied. Kobe Prentice. You can hit him in that left eye all you want, but Milrow is unaffected with the arm. He is on fire. Seven of seven, two touchdown passes to open this game. You can't start any better than that, right? All of our attention on Milrow's thigh, but watch this sail route. Find this opening here, and because the quarterback steps up, because Milrow steps up, you see the secondary. They step up as well, and they forget about the guy running right behind them. That's the threat of the left. Here's Brown from the two-yard line. And again, Brown struggling to find something. The story of Ray Davis is something. Because majority of their pass game is built off of the play action. It's built off of the run game getting going. So important for Mark Stoops and Liam Cohen right now to actually not look up at the scoreboard. Don't panic, right? You guys yes. have only ran three plays, right? Get back to that initial script. And I saw Liam in the elevator on the way up here after I was on the Blackhawk. And uh, he was going through a script. He liked a lot of it. And he wanted to get the run game going so he could set up the play action. Don't abandon that just because you're down two scores. By the way, how awesome. It was Veterans Day and you're up there in an Army Blackhawk helicopter. They had me in the seat with the door open the whole way. And I am afraid of heights. Yeah. That's a real thing. So it took a minute to loosen up, but it was pretty awesome. What can Devin Leary and the Cats find offensively? Leary, quick strike to the outside. Ball is out. Ball is scooped. Caleb Downs reaching for the end zone and ruled down at the one-yard line. It was Barry and Brown who coughed it up. And Caleb Downs, the sensational freshman. That guy is just different. Quick to get on it. Always in the right place at the right time, but we didn't see if Barry on Brown had this. Looks like he bobbles it a little bit as he's turning. Did he get complete control? Cherry on Arnold there 
the corner punching that ball out. Great heads up play. This Kentucky team has struggled with drops on the outside. Barry on Brown and Dane Key. They've struggled with ball security. And if that indeed is a fumble and it looked like it is. A huge blow to Kentucky as we just mentioned trying to just get back on track in this game. It looked like he initially bobbled it, but as he was kind of bent over it, it looked like he had firm control there. So that's just an unbelievable play by Terry on Arnold. And it's no surprise as they go with the tush push straight ahead in for the touchdown. It's no surprise that it was Caleb Downs who was right on top of it as Jalen Milrow scores yet another rushing touchdown, his 10th of the year, and he is limping more substantially. Remember, he took the big hit on the opening drive. Well, oh, getting helped off the field there, too. Is that an Ar Amari Nyblak there helping him off? And again, I mentioned I've had that injury, and it is almost debilitating. But, you know, once you realize you're trying to put force off that leg, just can't. So let's keep an eye on, on how that progresses. Let's go. So three total touchdowns for Milrow. Take the chance to check in with the studio and Matt. The for Alabama in this Kentucky offense that's run four plays, negative seven yards. Play action, Leary with a man in his face, downfield and too far to the outside of the intended target, Jordan Dingle. You want to have this same conversation of, hey, we can't panic, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's still five minutes left in the first quarter. That's the fifth play for Kentucky. So I know it feels like you want to try to get back all the 21 points with a couple plays, but you can't do that, right? We saw the protection breakdown there on a deep play action. They got to get back to running the football, ball control through the air to try to get a drive going here. Free snap penalty against Kentucky. Offense number six, five yard penalty. It remains second down. Shows you some of those stats of just comparing the two offenses early on. You can also add to the list the average yards per play as Kentucky is negative 1.4 and Alabama is averaging 9.1 yards per play. Yeah, Tess, not an ideal start no. here for Kentucky. I think probably a worst case scenario start. But again, let's see if they can just get a few positive plays and get a drive started. Second and 15 after the penalty. Leary drives the ball incomplete to the inside of Tavion Robinson. Yeah, pressure again in the face of Devin Leary. Saw that last play on a longer developing pass play that time. Trying to get something going over the middle. This offensive line has been improved for Kentucky. They're better than they were at times towards the end of last year, but this Alabama defensive front is something else. Isn't it? Braswell and Turner coming off the edge and on down in distance like this. Watch out for that guy, Chris Braswell. Third in the SEC in sacks. Of course, Dallas Turner on the other side. Leary. Shallow cross goes underneath to Ray Davis, who's going to be four and a half yards short of the line in the game. Kool Aid McKinstry with the tackle. So Wilson Berry, the 25 year old punter, who played three seasons of Aussie Rules football, back out there again. Kool Aid McKinstry is going to put his heels on the 30. Muffed. And was there a recovery? I think the ball went out of bounds there before Kentucky had the chance to recover. And the officials going to get together for a moment. And they're saying Kentucky football. Wow. So they get a break on special teams. A muff punt and a recovery by the Cats. Yeah, just a miss here by Kool-Aid McKinstry. He's always so sure-handed. That one right through the breadbasket. 
And watch, I think it's Addison right here. That's close. It falls on that. That is really close. That is yes. Nasir Addison, the reserve defensive back. But this is very close. Going on the field, the punt was lost by the receiving team and recovered by the kicking team. Carter being out of bounds. The previous play is under review. Now listen, do they have the indisputable video evidence to overturn this? The ruling on the field is that at that moment right there, he secures it. Looks like that first part that comes out of bounds is that right shoulder, right? The elbow as he's going down for the ball, that's all in bounds. But from that angle and from this angle, really tough to tell when he actually has secure possession of that ball. Looks as possible here. After further review, the early one field stands. First down, Kentucky. And they needed that desperately. And that's the first time with that play that Kentucky is in Bama territory today. And on life support early in this game, you felt like something like that had to happen for Kentucky to get a little confidence, get a little something going in their way early in this game because it's been all Alabama. Now a really important first couple play calls here for Liam Cohen in this offense. Haven't been able to get anything going. So they take over at the Alabama 32. Davis trying to get the edge and find anything at all. As Davis was able to turn the corner before he is met by Caleb Downs. Caleb Downs who had the fumble return that set up the most recent touchdown. But I remember with all these shifts and motions, Kevin Seeley even mentioned, man, when I flip on the tape, Look like Canadian football with how much they move <laughs> pre-snap. No Deontay Lawson, so Jihad Campbell, Tresman Marshall, guys that are calling out the adjustments as you see Barry on Brown moving in motion to a formation into the boundary. Davis again after he just went for five yards, and Davis will go for six this time and have a first down for Kentucky. And that is Kentucky's first first down of the day. Yeah, and I mentioned formation into the boundary. What does that mean? When you stick your passing strength and your receivers into the boundary, that takes number 13 right there, making the tackle Malachi Moore, that sticks him into the boundary. So a lot of times Kentucky's wanna, gonna wanna say, okay, 13, Malachi Moore, let's put you over here so we can run the opposite direction. The man in the white hat and shades is a 37-year-old play caller, Liam Cohn, who returned this year, the second stint here at Kentucky and Coach Stoops spent a year with the Rams and Sean McVay. Quick strike batted back and I think Leary had that one moment of do I do I try to catch it. No I don't think so. so never an incompletion. Never a good idea. At 3.30 on ABC today it'll be the rivalry game between Miami and a Florida State team that is aimed for the college football playoff. And then tonight in the SEC, 7 o'clock on ESPN, number nine Ole Miss, number two Georgia. What a game that should be. Of course, we were in Oxford last week. We were with the program, sizing up what could be an incredible run for Ole Miss. Boy, they're going to need a lot of Trey Harris, as we saw last week, making plays all over the field to run four quarters with Georgia. Second and ten, Davis cuts back against the grain, and Davis will make it a third and somewhat more manageable as he's tackled by Dallas Turner. And Jalen Milrow trying to keep that left leg warm and the blood flow after he took that big hit to the thigh on the opening series, but he has been flawless to put the tide up in front. Three touchdowns. Third and five for the Cats. A little bit of a passing situation. Keep an eye on Dallas Turner on the left side right there. He's been in the backfield in Devin Leary's face a few times already. Here he comes. Takes an inside move in his face again to the end zone. They go. And nearly a sensational catch, but drawing the penalty flag is Barry on Brown as he was locked up with Caleb Downs. Pass interference. Defense number two. I rule the ball be placed in the two yard line. First down. What well, actually worked against Alabama, the fact that there was pressure on Leary, because that ball is supposed to be on the outside shoulder, but Dallas Turner in Leary's face, so he underthrows it and he throws it inside. And that really messes with the leverage yes. on the outside right there, and that's why you have a pass interference. It's, it's so funny, I mean, with Game of Inches and such a nuanced piece of analysis by you, Jordan, but Dallas Turner doing his job yes. well cost Turn them on the back end. 
First and goal, Cats. A gotta have it moment after the turnover, the muff punt that was recovered by Addison. Ray Davis with nine rushing touchdowns on the year. Do we hear 10? Short pitch. Blockers on front, but look at the pursuit by Alabama as Jaheim Otis drives him back. Otis in there big time, and Kool-Aid McKinstry who muffed that punt that gave Kentucky the field position in this drive, making the tackle on the outside. Great job by Otis, great job by Kool-Aid McKinstry. Otis is a big man, isn't he? He, he was started much bigger. Yeah. 417. Four, he was 417 Ooh. pounds in January of 2022. The guy has lost 100 pounds. Second goal, play action. Leary to the outside. Touchdown, Kentucky. Tavion Robinson. Boy, that was the answer that Kentucky needed, huh? Again, Kool-Aid McKinstry muffing the punt, set up the drive for Kentucky when they were on life support early in this game. And the answer that they needed. The offense was going nowhere. It took a special teams miscue and a hustle play by Nazir Addison to spark things. As Alex Milrow moments ago scored his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. Of course, a sensational performance last week against LSU. Not just scoring, but what he was able to do on third downs was 11 of 14, being so consistent with that offense. Taking it out is Law, Kendrick Law from the end zone. Tied back on offense as we check in with Matt Berry and the guys in, in the country this week. What's your thumbnail sketch reaction to what went down? I don't even know what to think, honestly. I'm being honest. Fair. I don't. I, I don't. I don't think it, it changes the game much to have Harbaugh be able to coach and just not there on the sideline. So a rush to reaction. A punish a lot of that. Who knows what, if it was worth it or not? Milrow. Plenty of time to choose an option. And he goes to the outside looking for Prentice, but wasn't able to connect. SEC Conference Spotlight is presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. Yeah, Georgia with a big opportunity today. They'll clinch with that win or a Tennessee loss. If they don't win, they got Tennessee next week. That's going to be a huge one. And Alabama is here with a chance to lock it up as well. That was Milrose's first incompletion moments ago. Now he looks to the right side as he goes underneath the Benson as a penalty flag comes down. And Benson is at the 30-yard line. Malik Benson was one of the big JUCO transfer targets nationally. And thought he might develop into a bigger role this yes, year. Yes, they did. Almost like a Jamison Williams type, right? He's a 10-4, 100-meter guy in Kansas. Top 10 all-time in the state. He can fly. You always feel like Alabama is just, you know, casting the roles that they play. know. Yes. Pass interference, offense number 81. Personal foul, defense number 54 with a face mask. No foul for offset. we are replay the down. It's second down. So they always sit there. They say, okay, who's our burner? Yep. Who's our go-route guy? Who's our big-bodied possession guy? Uh-huh. You know, and they just, that was the role that they figured Benson would take. Kendrick Law, I find very interesting in what he's developing into with this receiver group. They're going to see... Dupree there, little contact. At the end of all that, uh, let's just try this again. So second and ten, Miller in the backfield with Milrow. And here is Jam. And he finds a good crease before he is tackled by Trevin Wallace. Jam Miller, who last week against LSU, Jordan, he was in on 13 plays, and that's the most playing time he has received. But he was very good in pass protection, and as a receiving back, had a 35-yard catch in the second quarter of that game. Yeah, he's a guy that I think has surprised this staff a little bit. Caught him on that big wheel route on third down, like you mentioned. But big third down here for this Kentucky defense. And with Milrow maybe a little hobbled, do they decide to bring pressure? 
Let's see if they come after Jalen Milrow. They're walking around like they are. They might drop out of this, though. Third down and four, closing moments of the first quarter. Downfield again and going up for it, but incomplete was Hale. And coverage that, came from Hairston. And about as tight a coverage as you could have from Maxwell Hairston. Leads the SEC with five interceptions that time. All over it, breaking up the pass. 21-7, six seconds back on the clock in the first quarter. First third down, Bama hadn't converted all day long as they punt away. And a fair catch by Robinson around the 11-yard line moments ago. Katie with Coach Saban. Coach Saban, there was a lot to like about that first quarter. What did you think of your team start? Well, I liked the way we started. We did a great job on offense, executing down the field. We got out of the, you know, two drives on defense, but then we made a big turnover, which changed the momentum around with the game a little bit. So we got to get it back, which we, we had the opportunity there in that series on offense and didn't, didn't do anything with it. Thank you for the time. Joe Tessitore and Jordan Rogers in for Jesse Palmer again. Love having the reins of this offense over to 31-year-old Tommy Reese. Yes. When Bill O'Brien came here as an established NFL head coach, established big-time college coach, and Bill had a tough time changing the offense because you come here, you run Nick Saban's system, but Tommy has adapted things and one of the best jobs by Nick Saban allowing his coaches to do that. Ray Davis spins for just a couple of yards. It was McKinstry who was first to get to him. This is where we're going to start to learn how much this offense, really specifically the pass game, has changed for Kentucky. The calls that Liam Cohen starts to make, what he feels his quarterback can execute and is most comfortable with, because they're going to need him to get hot to jump back in this game. Second and eight. Leary checks down to Davis, and Davis slips up as he was trying to cut back against the grain gosh more pressure just running a little bit of a game on the left side of the offensive line gonna be looping once again this time the boy B comes through as the guy that's kind of the I'm gonna take up two that's bodies right. he gets an opening ends up getting the beeline to the quarterback he's not supposed to be no. the guy that gets there he's supposed the to be the, exactly that's the TE it's supposed to be the end who gets in there the outside edge rusher third down and seven Third down, obvious passing situations. Braswell off the edge in the bottom here. Goes to the near side, gets it complete, but it's going to be three yards shy of the lane to gain as Terrion Arnold was quickly on Robinson. Just great coverage. Plastered all over Robinson. Arnold plays outside a corner. He'll move inside to that star position with some of the injuries. Jalen Key injury. Third down, he'll move inside. Such a versatile player. Third three and out for Kentucky. Remember, McKinstry had the muff punt moments ago that led to Kentucky's score. Barry on to punt again. Fair catch inside the 40 yard line. In the short yarded situations. Three total touchdowns for Milrow. Tackle for loss. Big Deion Walker shredding down McClellan. Katie. You know, Tess, Jalen Milrow's father, Quentin, was a Marine. His mother, Lola, served in the Navy. So military core values were very much a part of Jalen's upbringing. He said his parents never sugarcoated anything. So when he was benched after the Texas loss, his parents told him time stops for no one. Life goes on. You can waste time feeling sorry for yourself, or you can address the problem head on, learn from it, and grow. And boy, did he. His teammates, his coaches applauded the way that this young man responded. Great messaging. They fake the short pitch, and then he connects with Dupree. C.J. Dupree. And a great play by Jalen Milrow as he fakes the short pitch and then hits it over the middle. Boy, watch how it affects the linebacker as they suck. It seems trying to get back into position there. Trevin Wallace just too late. 
with Dupree running right by him. This is Benson, and Benson tips toes the sidelines as they were quick to get to the line and snap that ball. And now you see the rhythm and tempo of Alabama. Yeah, watch this linebacker suck up and then try to get back into position there. Great job with the play action. That was a 15-yard reception by Benson. McClellan. Showing a little bit of toughness on the inside there as Deion Walker wrestles him again. And Deion Walker is a guy that he, he's got to take over a game, right? He is absolutely capable of it. Talking to defensive coordinator Brad White, he said, look, when he's at his best, he is one of, if not the best defensive lineman in the entire country. And that's valid. That is true. It's the plays where he either takes it off or catches a breather at times that they need more consistency out of it. I love a big man when the jersey doesn't yeah. occupy as much space as the <laughs> T-shirt underneath. That's when you know you're big, 348 pounds. Second and seven design quarterback run. Milrow trying to get to the corner. Flag is down as he shows you that athleticism getting around the block of Jace McClellan. But we'll see if we walk this back as the flag is down at the 22 yard line. Maybe too many guys on the line of scrimmage or no. Maybe not somebody off. I think it might have been a formation issue down here at the bottom with the flag. Two fouls on the play, both on the offense. Illegal formation yeah. on the offense will be declined. 65 the offense, 10-yard penalty for the previous spot. Repeat second down. It was indeed, as you said, the illegal formation, then the holding call. Yeah, all these guys here kind of on the same level. Not enough guys on the line of scrimmage. But there. these are the kind of plays yeah. that they now have in the playbook for Jalen Miller, the designed quarterback runs to the perimeter and it has changed this offense entirely yeah I think Tommy Reese mentioned on Thursday when we talked to him I wanted to take some of the quick decisions off his plate right and just let him be an athlete give him a couple lead blockers get him to some green grass and let him take over and that's what they've done starting last week second and 17 after the penalty my black in motion he had the 26 yard touchdown earlier he looks that way and now trying to direct traffic and gets it complete to Williams, and Williams is able to turn the corner and score it for Alabama. Jalen Milrow extending the play and finding Roy Dell Williams for a 27-yard touchdown. And what were we just talking about? The running ability of Jalen Milrow. And what does that do? It means once he gets out on the perimeter, watch the Eric Jackson. He's going to be right on Miller. And he's going to have to decide, do I stay on him? Or excuse me, Roy Dell Williams, that was the running back. Do I stay on the running back or do I attack the athletic, athletic quarterback? He goes after Milrow, Williams wide open. And Malik Benson held up his man for just a moment. Gave the talented Roy. Two veterans with us, the parents of the star quarterback. Lola and Quentin Milrow. And there is their son, who has three passing touchdowns and one rushing touchdown. And this is what defensive coordinator Brad White mentioned. When he escapes the pocket, you have to designate a guy. Look at Derek Jackson. He's got to stay on that guy, and he's got to allow Trevin Wallace to chase down Milrow. You can't leave your guy to go after the quarterback and leave a guy wide open for a touchdown. One of those things that's so difficult to coach out of guys, right? They see an athletic quarterback run and you want to go get him, but you got to let the spy or the designated linebacker for Milrow attack and stay in coverage. So Nick Saban, he's coaching him up again. He's done such a good job of being decisive in recent weeks. Leary. Drives that ball well to Dane Key out to midfield. Let's go to Matt for an update. Down Blake Corum with a touchdown. J.J. McCarthy is 7 of 8 passing in that Big Ten showdown at Penn State. The 25-yard completion to Dane Key. Leary, shallow cross, able to get it as he goes to his tight end. Caddis, Caddis keeps his footing and dives ahead. Oh, excuse me, that is Brendan Bates, the other tight end. Excellent play by Bates. Watch this action pull both these linebackers, and the tight end is just able to sneak right behind them. 
Liam Cohen talking to him yesterday actually mentioned we want to try to hide our tight end behind some of those running backs with some play action. That was an area they felt like they could attack this Alabama defense with some of the injuries at safety that they're dealing with. Superb 33 yard reception from Bates. Talented senior who came out of Archbishop Moeller in Cincinnati. Leary to the end zone. As Caleb Downs tried to reach up for it, incomplete. And he's looking for Brown. Boy, this is this is where as a quarterback you look up at the scoreboard and go, okay, we're down three touchdowns. Need to start taking some chances, but that's a throw that Devin Leary's got to be careful. Still have to hold the football with high regard and protect it, especially when you're in field goal range points you need to just stack up. Still got to make the right decisions and be aggressive. It's a hard balance. So McCarn Bay met at the line of scrimmage by Jahad Campbell, who had the big fourth quarter scoop and score against Tennessee. Dallas Turner involved as well. And now it's going to be third down. Third and ten. Well, the M.O. on third down has been games for this Alabama defensive front. Not as much blitzing, but a lot of games getting Dallas Turner maybe on the inside. Chris Braswell maybe on the inside with some of those T.E. stunts. Let's see where they use Dallas Turner. He's going to start over that left tackle right there. See if they bring him back inside. Oh, well, they drop him. Third down and 10, checking down Ray Davis. Can he get there? Trying to split defenders, and he's unable to get to the line to gain as Story and Amos combine for the tackle. That's all right. They got him in a situation where they can go for it here on fourth, and I think you absolutely have to as Kentucky brings in two big tight ends. Alabama answers bringing in Jaheim Otis. Good big body up front as well. Kentucky's one of seven well, Alabama. on fourth down this year. Yeah, they were running guys on late there. They didn't have the right personnel package in. Nick Samo Karnbe. And they motioned out of this right before the tight end. Let's see, excuse me, timeout. They do again. Fourth down and one. Leary in the shotgun. And he is sacked. He is brought down and a turnover on downs as that Bama front just collapses on him. He threw the ball and it was batted back in his face. And he was able to secure it and then he was taken down. It was a boom boom of the ball deflecting right back to him. And big Tim Keenan and Otis were right there. Yeah, I think a Boydby maybe got his hands on it there. And again, there wasn't anything there. I don't think he was completing that throw even if it got through the line of scrimmage there. Interesting, right? You got Ray Davis. You got three tight ends in the game. You need just a little bit. And you trust your quarterback that is playing better last couple weeks, but this past game has struggled. Kentucky on the season is one of eight on fourth down. And that's how they turn it over when they had a scoring opportunity. McClellan, look at Chase McClellan slither through. Excellent run by the senior from Alito, Texas. This is where Alabama, I think, has got to start leaning on Kentucky a little bit. This is where that physicality that Mark Stoops mentioned yesterday. Where Alabama gets a lead, and they want to just start bullying you up front. Eight yards from McClellan. They're leading rusher by a wide margin. Milrow, and as he gets to the outside of the block, and is able to extend it. He was just using Robbie Utes for a moment there. Which way will I go? And he goes to the outside where he's so dangerous with open space. And again, one of those plays where Tommy Reese mentioned, I want to give the illusion of zone read. Look, that looks like zone read. It's not. He's not reading anybody. Robbie Utes is coming to block that guy that is unblocked. That is a quarterback run the entire way. And that injury that we saw earlier, maybe not having the impact that it looked like it might have in early in the first quarter on Jalen Milrow. Milrow with a man in his face. This ball is lofted downfield as Bond went up for it. 
And that is incomplete as he was juggling it out of bounds. Katie. You know, Tess, between every series, Milrow is getting treatment on that left thigh. He's been on the bike multiple times. They've wrapped it with heat. They've wrapped it with stem. You guys know better than anybody, there's a difference between being hurt and being injured. He is managing pain right now and playing for his team. Yeah, he's hurt. And again, I've had that same injury. It's not fun. And you just got to continue to find ways to loosen it up because it gets tighter and tighter as the game goes on. Second and 10, Jace McClellan. There was nothing there from the start as the Kentucky front made the run fits with Ripka making the final tackle. And this is where Kentucky wants to live, right? They want to force these third and longs, but like we saw earlier, you have to be very cognizant of where Jalen Milrow goes, where he tries to escape the pocket if coverage is there. That's where he hurts you on these third downs. See Roy Dell Williams pointing out pass protection on that left side, third down and 11. Kentucky's going to drop eight here. It looks that way, doesn't it? In zone coverage, so a lot of eyes on Milro. Let's see if he can find an opening. They only bring three. Delayed, though, on the near side as Milro is being chased down, turns the corner, and that ball is intercepted. He went back across the grain, and Jordan Lovett picked it off. Jordan Lovett, who missed the last couple weeks, returns today and comes up big. Well, this time they put a spy on Jalen Milrow. Oh, that's not him. Sorry, it was a defensive end that dropped out right there. That's what forced Milrow to get all the way to the sideline, and then you can't make that mistake, right? Nope. Laid across your body. That's day one stuff. You can't do it as a quarterback. And then it was a turnover on downs on their last possession. Leary gets the ball out quickly to Brown. Yeah, it's a massive drive here, right? You're down three scores, four minutes left. You don't need to have a, a huge sense of urgency. You'd love to tick away this clock, get points on the board. A touchdown would be great. Anything is awesome because you get the ball after half as well. A chance to double up here and really jump right back into this game starting in the second half. Could have really built on some momentum if they had any points on that last drive. But now let's see what they come up with here. Second down and five. Play action. Leary. It was tight coverage from Caleb Downs as he was looking for Tavion Robinson. Boy, one of those sail routes, right, that Liam Cohen talked about so much last night and Kevin White mentioned the tough part about these sail routes there's no landmark there's no depth Tavion Robinson there is just searching for an area trying to find an opening and Caleb Downs just all over that I mean there was nowhere to throw that football great job of coverage there to force the incompletion Kentucky still looking for the first third down conversion of the day third down and five Leary on the slant will get it to Dane Key. First down, Kentucky. Boy, really confident throw there in a big moment for this Kentucky offense. I feel like Leary's getting a little confidence in the quick game, right? I feel like that's where Liam Cohen's going to get his quarterback back on track. They would like to hit those shot plays. They just haven't been there. So keep chipping away at this lead and picking up yards and first downs. Of course, helps against the pass rush of Alabama with Turner and Braswell's No well. doubt. Davis testing the right side, and he was tripped up again by Caleb Downs. It's incredible, this true freshman. How many times you watch an Alabama game just this first half alone, you call his name, had the big fumble return down to the one-yard line earlier. They talk about him as if he's an NFL experienced veteran pro in terms of his football IQ. And when anybody talks about a good safety, they talk about a guy that can play at all three levels, right? The back end is that third level. The second level is the linebackers. He can roll into the box yes. and be a physical downhill player. And he can also come from that third level, as we just saw, all the way down to the first level and make plays and tackles at the line of scrimmage. Second and 11. Leary threw it behind the intended target. So he was trying to find Caddis.
Third and 11 now. Remember Dallas Turner, top 10 in the nation in sacks. Chris Braswell is third in the SEC in sacks. Alabama has the weaponry to get after him. There is big Dallas Turner. Had a huge play in the fourth quarter against LSU. The bad pass that was intercepted helped put the game away. Third and 11. Excellent break on the ball from Arnold. Terry on Arnold. What an interception. Roll tie. Well, that ball just a little late to the outside. Watch this second movement, that slide right there, see that? When his third foot hit the ground, the ball didn't come out, and that ball was a hair late. Terry on Arnold able to underestimate us so we can embarrass you. Well, that's a chip if I've ever heard Isn't it. Isn't it? That's incomplete, that diving effort. Moments ago, he just got that interception and had the interception that we were referencing last week against LSU when Dallas Turner made the big play of the tip ball of Jaden Daniels pass. That was Arnold who got that interception in the fourth quarter. And now he gets this one here in the first half against Kentucky. Williams on second and ten. He just bounces back as Saunders was in the right place against Williams. Actually just spun around right into that to force a third down here. Again, Kentucky still with two timeouts. They can force a punt here. Still some time to flip this game before half like we were talking about earlier. Third down and 13. Milro. And he just has to throw it away as Trevin Wallace, one of the few guys on the field that could match speed with Jalen Milro, was right in front of him. Oh, he's a freakish athlete, right? 241 pounds. He's hit 22 miles per hour on the GPS before, which is why I mentioned earlier, he's that guy that usually QB spies on Milro. See, he's going to pass off the route, and then he's going to have eyes on Milro and try to force throwaways or sacks just like that. James Burnup on to punt away. He's fifth nationally with a 48.2 average per punt. Come after it. Nearly got to it. And it came up big on special teams before. And here's that. Look forward to the entire day of college football. You and I got to find ourselves a good steakhouse in town for those 330 games. A few adult bevies, a little, oh, little yeah. grub. Just make sure to stay hydrated. First down run, Ray Davis. Straight ahead. He works his way for that final push. Now to the 38 yard line. Damon Payne with the tackle for the time. So as I mentioned, both timeouts here, so a little under a minute and a half, still plenty of time. Devin Leary with time, and that's a good, good pass where he basically just forced it right into Josh Caddis, and it's a first down for Kentucky. Yeah, that same route that he missed earlier to Caddis when they had the football, threw it right by him, right on target that time. Minute to play before we get to halftime. Leary backed up. Braswell chasing. And he's going to have to throw this away. Tim Smith and Chris Braswell were closing in on Devin Leary. At least 53 seconds. Two timeouts for Kentucky. A second and 10 in front of them. Yeah, that play took a little too long, though. I think Leary was trying to change something at the line of scrimmage. Under a minute here now, even with those two timeouts. Let's line up, run it, and just trust the play call. There's Dallas Turner on one side, Chris Braswell on the other. And the target is number 13 in gray and blue. And Turner was a little anxious to get to it. Off 
offside. Defense number 15. The movement by the defense caused the offense to react. The penalty is five yards. Remains second down. Now Liam Cohn and the play caller on Kentucky can think a little differently. Yeah, they get Barry on Brown and Dane Key back in the game. Had a true freshman and a sophomore out there that haven't played much this season. So get a couple of their playmakers back in here to see if they can get in the ball. There's Brown in motion, second and five. Leary goes underneath to Davis, but Campbell was right on top of him. Campbell's a guy that could start to emerge as one of the next great ones. He's getting extended playing time because Deontay Lawson is out injured today. Yeah, Deontay Lawson's the quarterback of the defense, so, so Campbell's got big responsibility today, especially with how much Kentucky moves. He's got all the physical tools. I think Kevin Steele and Nick Saban were excited to see him communicate and run the show today, which he's doing a good job of so far. He was an edge rusher in high school, a little different playing in Saban and Steele's system as an inside backer. Third and three as the flag comes down, maybe the right side of that offensive line. Jeremy Flax trying to get a little head start there All on Chris start. Braswell. On the offense number 77, five-yard penalty. It remains third down. Now, I believe made famous by David Bakhtiari of the Packers, former Colorado buff. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys in the NFL now really trying to time up that cadence to get just an extra half a second to set the angle against good defensive ends. Flax was awesome when we were here in that Florida game. Thank you. They ran for 300 yards, and Flax was named the SEC Offensive Lineman of the Week. Ray Davis had 280 in that game and could have had more. If oh, they just went with the yeah. play calling in the fourth quarter. Could have set the all-time. He had like school record. 200 and something in the second quarter, I believe. He did. Third down and eight. Leary. Down fields and too far to the outside of Robinson. Amos was there with coverage. Boy, a really good idea by Leary. Just trying to throw a jump ball, back shoulder throw. With Chris Braswell looping around, providing a little bit of pressure on him, speeding the process up, but just a little too high for Robinson on the outside. And a big missed opportunity there for Kentucky to not even just get in field goal range to try to get some points on the board before half and before they get the ball back in the second half. Barry looking to pin Alabama here. McKinstry gets away from it, and Kentucky trying to bat it back in. He's in a level where he can drink a little bourbon, have a little sip on air. Me? I don't think they'd let me do that. No, no, no. Boy, Del Williams, we're glad you wasn't you're up there in a Blackhawk helicopter. We yeah, yeah. <laughs> as good as can be. Final seconds ticking down. What an interesting first half for Jalen Milrow. Comes into the game red hot off of the four rushing touchdown performance against LSU and gets banged up. I mean, takes a big hit to the left thigh. Has to leave the game. Comes back into the game, and he's been nearly flawless. Three passing touchdowns, the rushing touchdown, and a 28-7 lease. Number eight, Bama out in front, looking to claim the SEC West yet again. Katie. Thanks, Tess. Coach Saban, you're missing two key pieces on defense. What's impressed you about the way that group has adjusted and played so far? Well, the guys have, you know, stepped up and played well. We made a mistake down here on the goal line on their touchdown uh, in the coverage. But, you know, new guys play in new spots. Sometimes you get that. But um, I'm happy with the way the guys are playing. But we got to come out in the second half and do a good job. How would you assess Jalen Milrow's first half? Uh, you know, he started out really well. I think he's got to take what the defense gives. Uh, you know, I don't want to throw interceptions. You can throw the ball away. They dropped eight guys. There's nowhere to go with it. Sometimes you just got to give up. Thank you for the time. Right, thanks. Always a coach. Got to find ways to get him involved in the screen game through the air. Still got to get your best player involved. Going to get back into this one in the second half. There is Devin Leary, the transfer from NC State. There was a players only meeting a few weeks ago. He performed very well against Tennessee, had 372 yards passing. They 
tried to trim some of the inventory, as they say, of the playbook so that he can play a little more decisive and eliminate some of the slow developing crossovers. But nothing is slow when it comes to the Bama defense, whether it's the edge rushing of Turner and Braswell or the excellent play in the defensive backfield by Caleb Downs, McKinstry, and Arnold. Ray Davis, the star running back, held to just 23 yards rushing in that first half. Leary, play action. Into traffic, incomplete, broken up by Terion Arnold. Oh, Terion all over that, and that was a dangerous throw because Christian Story, the safety also filling in for Jalen Key, was sitting right there. So if that ball was out in front of the receiver at all, it probably would have been an interception. Again, it's, it's just tough, this pass game, because so much of it is predicated on the run. If you're not affecting those linebackers and threatening with that downhill run, they're just keeping eyes on the quarterback and staying right in coverage. Second and ten, going to check it down. Davis, blockers in front. They set up the screen as he's able to get the first down. Oh, Liam Cohen was listening to the open, huh, here for the second half. So you got to find ways to get your best player the ball when the run game isn't working. Right? Alabama's been aggressive on the ends, especially Chris Braswell right there all day. Use that against him. Quick, easy throw. Get Ray Davis out in space with a couple blockers. And also a good job by those couple blockers. Yeah. Not being too early on the release against that front of Alabama. There is Liam Cohen. If you can see him there, if you can make him out through the <laughs> opaque glass and the sunglasses and the tinted hat. Ray Davis in the backfield on first down. Picks up the pressure. And as Leary just had to throw it away, Terry on Arnold was fighting nonstop to get to Devin Leary and Tim Keenan joined him there. How many times have we said Terry on Arnold's name? And every time I feel like we say it, he's in a different spot, right? Because of the injuries, he's sometimes outside, sometimes at that star position, this time blitzing off the side. Davis does a great job of trying to get in front of him, but an even better job by Arnold of skirting that tackle. Excuse me, skirting that block. He's been the outspoken leader of that defensive backfield about this team. Saying we're a true team. We don't have a Bryce Young and Will Anderson. We're a true team here. Second and ten. Ball was batted at the line of scrimmage. That was Tim Keenan getting in that path of Devin Leary. And something to keep an eye on there for Devin Leary. He took a hard hit on that last play. Fell on that right shoulder. Remember, he was taken out of the game last week. Here we go. Watch him come down this right shoulder. Was taken out of the game last week because of a shoulder injury. Slow to get up on that one. Something to keep an eye on. They're going to need that right arm if they're going to get back in this game. Third down and 10. Right in his face immediately. He took another big hit, and a flag comes down as he was crushed by three Alabama defenders, including Campbell. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 93 with contact to the head. 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. That's Jamarian Latham. That's Trey Amos coming in from the right side as well. Just, oh, and we just showed a hard hit that Devin Leary took. Look at this one. And you see that right hand of Latham getting up to the helmet area of Devin Leary as if that's not enough. You have the other two players coming in as well. Full body attack. So the 15-yard penalty will be a first down for Kentucky across midfield at the Alabama 48-yard line. Leary off play action. And coming back for the ball and getting it is Josh Caddis. It's a heck of an effort from Caddis. Wow, unbelievable. Look at this ball underthrown. Does a great job of adjusting. Let's see. Ooh. Does he have firm control when his body hits out of bounds? 
Right elbow comes down, but does the ball move right there? I don't know. I think that's a great effort. Yeah, I think that's a great catch. He pins it against his shoulder pads. And you do not see any wiggle in that football. Josh Caddis with wow. great body control. That's pretty unbelievable right there. What a catch. First down, Katz, Leary. Incomplete. Sumo Kargbe almost turned and had a touchdown, but he couldn't hold on to the ball. Boy, and this is a heck of a throw by Devin Leary. I mean, the ball location here to get it on the back shoulder of Sumo Kargbe, who initially looked like he had it. That's a, that's a really good job there by Kool-Aid McKinstry of attacking that ball with his right hand. So you see here the progressive pylon. Watch his right hand come in here. There it is on the progressive pylon cam. And just punch. Left hand as well. Great job by Kool-Aid there. A pass broken up by Kool-Aid McKinstry. Second down and ten. Leary pressured again. Tries to spin out of it and he does. And gets it complete near the ten yard line. That line to gain as he goes to key. Boy, Tresman Marshall had a free hit on Devin Leary. I'll tell you what, there's one or two plays a game, every game where this happens to Leary. Somehow he gets out of a jam like this. Did it against Missouri, did it against Mississippi State. Great job of spinning out and finding his receiver. Boy, the natural tools that Leary has, that's what it just keeps you coming back going, man, this guy's got so much good football that he can play. It's consistently making those decisions and those throws. They're going to mark him short and a third down and one. And now a timeout is going to be used by Kentucky. Well, they've been knocking on the door a few times. Can they crash on through? But will Kentucky try to have a little fire here in the third quarter as they are down at the 11-yard line facing a third and one? Coach Stoops talked about all week long. Hey, we have to deal with Milrow, but we have to be effective offensively ourselves. They haven't been when they've been in position recently. Can they now? Third down and one. Quarterback sneak straight ahead, first down. It'll be first and goal, Kentucky. Remember their last three drives prior to this drive. They got into Bama territory, but they didn't come away with points. Yeah, I love the decision there. Remember the last big time short yardage play, the fourth down, they went empty and threw the ball. So just trust your big boys up front. And now when you're in this inside the 10 area, this is where Alabama likes to play a lot of man cover. This is where those motions can create an advantage for you. Motion as they go with the orbit to Brown. Brown trying to get to the corner and reach out for it. As he came around and took it ahead for seven yards. He's second and goal from the two. Oh, I love getting the ball in Barry on Brown's hands like that. He's been quiet through the air, but he's a guy that's probably the most dynamic for this Kentucky team. So they need to find ways and continue to find ways to get him the ball. But this is where this is where Kentucky teams have passed. They just lined up and said, we're going to push you into the end zone. Let's see if they have that same mentality here. That big blue wall mentality. Davis, yes they do. As the offensive line paves the way for sweet baby Ray. It's really a good double team here. Right up the gut to open up that initial hole. Tim Smith almost blew that one up, but great double team by the center and guard there. Just like you said, the old big blue wall wouldn't have blinked. Kentucky doesn't there either. Tenth rushing touchdown of the year for Ray Davis. And they're starting to get a little bit of that mojo back, right? It was a rough start, a slow start for Kentucky. That's a nice way to put it, but they're climbing their way back into this game. You got to go back to October 4th of 97, the last time Kentucky beat Alabama. It was right here in overtime. 
Or you can go back to 1922 for the other. Oh, yeah, just 1922. Just 1922. Six zip Kentucky here in Lexington. That was a barn burner back it then. It was back then. And Williams on the return. Williams catches a seam, and it's a good return out past the 35-yard line. Weekend lineup. Jordan is brought to you by... Game back, Kate Prescore. Quinchon Judkins wasn't quite hitting his stride yet. It's a different Ole Miss team now. It'll be a fun one to watch. That is coming up tonight on ESPN. Cannot wait to see that. So much to be decided in the SEC today. This game could decide the West. McClellan can't find space out on the perimeter. As he was tackled that time by Hardaway. It was a fast start for Jalen Milrow, right? And in last couple drives, interception, punt, then halftime, they got to find a way to get back in rhythm. As you see, last couple games, he's in some rare company there with a number one overall pick, a couple first-round draft picks, and NFL starters. And this is the guy who started the first two weeks, lost to Texas, and was benched in week three. Second and seven as he gets it to Bond. Bond is going to be right at the stick. And I love that, right? And this is this is what's hard as a quarterback, is when you play a team like Kentucky that plays so much what we call top-down zone, where they're going to stay way over the top of you. They're going to force you to take the underneath throws. That's what Saban said at half. I want to see Jalen take what they give him. Great throw there to free access for a first down pickup. McClellan straight ahead, Jace McClellan. Heck of a run. And now Tommy Reese, the play caller, is hitting on all cylinders with this offense. Well, and Dupree here, the tight end's going to get a great little reach block on the inside right there to open up that hole for McClellan. And that's one of the aspects of this defense being, excuse me, offense being so different under Tommy Reese. They play with a lot of tight ends. 12 personnel is something they live in over 40% of their plays, where last year it was about 18%. Of course, his first year at Bama after being the play caller for BK at Notre Dame. Kobe Prentice, he is brought back by Afari. You know, it's interesting with Tommy Reese, guy plays at Notre Dame and coaches at Notre Dame. We visited with him the other night. He said, listen, I needed this kind of a challenge in my life. Needed a little bit of a reset, right? And everybody talks about the culture here under Nick Saban, the culture at Alabama. And he mentioned, look, it's bringing out the best in me, right? The competitiveness of every day being in this facility, the greatness and the grind of the coaches like Nick Saban that I get to see every single day. It's pushed me to push myself, and I think you're seeing the best version of Tommy Reese. Milrow on second and 12 is going to loft it deep. And well out of bounds, he was looking for Kendrick Law. Katie. I thought it was interesting, guys. He said you get to a point in your career where you feel like you have things figured out, and then you go to a place, as you guys mentioned, that challenges in you in new ways. He said his hunger to continue to learn and improve as a coach and play caller has been reignited since joining Coach Saban's staff. And now Tommy Reese, as you see his career timeline, is facing a third and 12. This crowd's going to roar even more. Uh, third in California here, not much to call, especially against a team that wants to play so much zone. So if they do decide to pass it, let's see if they can give Milrow enough time. Caden Proctor, the left tackle, has been a work in progress. It's going to be one on one here on the outside at the top of your screen. True freshman, one of the top recruits in the country. See how he holds up. They back off into coverage on third and 17 and he converts Kobe Prentice again Jalen Milrow with that protection able to find his receiver Prentice first down time I mean look at this pocket does it get any better than this when you give Jalen Milrow time to scan the field that's one of those sail routes one of those deep crossers where that receiver is just searching for green grass not really a landmark trying to get across the field to the numbers and find the opening but great protection up front across the board. Milrow pitches eventually to Bonds, who is pushed out of bounds. 
And this, again, is one of those flood concepts that we highlighted at the beginning of the game. You're going to have someone really deep. You're going to have someone on an over route, someone in the flats, and Milro gets to his second option, the over route there. And because of the protection, able to put that right on the money. McClellan straight ahead, reaching out, but it'll be first and goal, Alabama. Boy, and this just feels a little bit like what I mentioned earlier and what Coach Stoops mentioned to us, that Alabama, at some point in the game, just decides they want to lean on you. I mean, they are huge up front across the board at offensive line. Everyone's 330 and north of that. You have to match the physicality of an Alabama team at the line of scrimmage for four quarters. And right now, Kentucky giving up a little bit too much. First and goal, Milrow. And it is a high five for Jalen Milrow, his fifth total touchdown of the day. Mola and Quinton who served our armed forces here on Veterans Day, watching their son continue his ascent. Well, when you score something like seven touchdowns or so in the last how many? Eight quarters, nine quarters, whatever it is, mom and dad, it's just kind of a golf clap at that oh, point. Hey, You're well, used to it. Last week, five to <laughs> There's nine. Oh, nine, sorry. Nine touchdowns in six and a half quarters of foot unranked opponents. They are the number eight team in the country facing these cats up 35 to 14. Katie. You know, Tess, a while back, Tommy Reese told Jalen Milrow, I don't ever want to call a play where you feel anything but comfortable and confident. So if there's something you don't like, tell me. I'll take it out immediately. Reese said he and Milrow really collaborated on the packages we're seeing now. They meet every morning to go over things. They spend extra time together on Fridays. Reese said anytime you can empower your quarterback and they feel like they are a part of the decision-making process, they become more invested in the offense, and it raises their level of play. As you guys mentioned, he should know. He played the position. That's right. And they've been finding ways to run him on the perimeter in recent weeks. Things that weren't in the offensive playbook even a month ago, they say. Ray Davis is stacked up and driven back. Combination of tied players, including Campbell. When I love what Tommy Reese said about the benching and how that forced Milrow to change his preparation. Started asking for more meeting time. Wanted to talk about more things, meet more frequently, go over the game plan in a different manner. So totally changed his approach and preparation to the game. And I think that's why you're seeing him play at such a high level in part today. And in your career, when you were with James Franklin yeah. at Vanderbilt, at the height, well, you guys were going to back-to-back -back bowl games. Yeah. That happened to you. Did the same thing. I got benched week three against Presbyterian for really just the reason to kind of put me in my place. Show me that, hey, you don't just get to come out here and play quarterback. you got to put in the work. And it changed the way I prep. And Devin Leary, Devin Leary there in the arms of Chris Braswell once again. Second sack of the day for Alabama. And this is the quandary you're in. Down three scores is you have to push the football down the field. Payne actually in there and Braswell. You can see Payne working on the right guard there. Man, coverage downfield, just there as well. Plastered. Great coverage. Oh, we got the great divide. You don't see that great divide a There's lot. one way to hedge your bet. That's it. See that in a couple weeks with the Iron Bowl a lot, back in the great state of Alabama, but not often with Kentucky in Alabama. Third and 21. Leary's going to go underneath to Key, who's going to be well short as he's tackled immediately by Caleb Downs. Leary. Just a frustrating day top to bottom for Kentucky, but a really good day for that young man, Caleb Downs. And as Mark Stoops tries to figure out what's going wrong with this offense, it's been a myriad of things. Protection's been up and down. Decision-making accuracy at times up and down with Devin Leary. And you can't do that against a number eight team in Alabama. Four times now it's been a three and out for Kentucky. As Barry boots it away. Kool-Aid from the 35-yard line. Here goes McKinstry. Excellent return inside the 40.
Oh, I love when the punt return or Kool-Aid, I love when they can get just straight up field. And off so a short field for Alabama. They start on the 38. Williams, he hits the hole, kept his balance, and drives ahead to the 32-yard line. You up for some college hoops? Always. State Farm Champions Classic. This is Tuesday, 7 o'clock, Duke, Michigan State, number two, number four. You got Kentucky, these cats, against number one, Kansas. But the best part is in between the reveal of the college football playoff top 25 rankings after game number one between Duke and Michigan State. And will that shake up a little bit, right? If Georgia... I thought it was going to shake up. I thought it was, week. too. If Georgia knocks off an Ole Miss, then I think they have earned the right oh, to jump Ohio State to on. one. But not even a question. Williams, good run for a first down. I mean, that is the most substantial game. And this is the totally. part of the Georgia schedule that you knew was coming. You just sit Kirby said, we don't even look. We don't even care at that yeah. number next to our name. It's probably going to be a one if they get through tonight. No doubt. It's got to be, right? And with Tennessee on the horizon, Tennessee sitting just outside the top ten in the college football playoff rankings as well. They're going to find out what they're about. And, hey, maybe a Brock Bowers get back on the field tonight. You think? Changes things up. If tightrope surgery and back that quick. No. Never doubt out Bowers. Williams with Oots blocking in front. But cutting through was a fari to make a good tackle on Roy Dell Williams. And a fari doing a good job today as well. We mentioned to start the game that Andrew Phillips was out at corner. He's the guy that usually plays that nickel spot. Alex Safari's been all over the field playing some stars, some safety, getting down around the box. Second and nine, Milrow gets another completion. This goes to Nyblock, who had the touchdown earlier today. Boy, once again, almost using Kendrick Law as a decoy, moving him from one side to the other. He's going to go wheel route up the sideline. He's going to pull those defenders out of the way for Nye Black to find that vacancy in the zone there. Another flood concept for this Alabama defense, excuse me, offense. They've been money on all day. Jam Miller. And he's inside the 10 yard line. Good to give Jason McClellan a bit of a rest with Roy Dell Williams getting carries, Jam Miller getting carries, just managing this point of the season. No doubt, everybody's banged up at this point. Alabama especially, not as much on the offensive side, definitely on the defensive side of the ball. But they're next to Chattanooga, so hopefully get a little bit of a breather there, but then the Iron Bowl right after that. Another big matchup before a potential SEC championship if they uh, hold on today, obviously. Punch their ticket with a win today. And getting down to the one-yard line was Miller. Remember, that line to gain was right there. So this should be first and goal based on that spot. I mean, they're going to get in the tush push here and just give Milrow another rushing touchdown? Jalen Milrow right now has three passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns. Could he have a sixth touchdown day? But well, they went QB sneak from the four-yard line against LSU. Looks like they might do it here again. Nope. Miller, he is second effort. No mark yet. Yes, he's marked short. Final seconds of the third quarter. I think they'll let this one tick away. Get to the fourth quarter in control. They stopped the clock? For a moment. Oh, okay. Here we go. And now those final seconds of this third quarter will tick off. Coach Saban said this is not a time to be complacent. They haven't been by knockout as we start the fourth quarter. And as they have the ball on the one-yard line. 
And they're trying to push Milrow in. Well, I thought he got it with that second effort. Boy, the second effort looked like he did, but as they clear this pile, it is a touchdown. Roy Dell Williams with a tush push of Jalen Milrow, and it's a six pack for Milrow. Three rushing, three passing. The touchdowns keep coming and coming. Love these ones, too. Look at the push. Because he, he got stopped right away. The initial push, Roy, Roy Dell Williams came up and threw him into the end zone. Jim Miller tried. It wasn't until Williams came up that really pushed him over the edge there. I feel like that much like sacks being divvied up. That's yeah, a half touchdown. Up, yeah, for, can we break up that touchdown? Yeah. Roy Dell Williams gets a, a half touchdown. <laughs> no, test quarterback always gets it. Come on. But Jordan for the CFP. It's hard to believe that you can award a Heisman though for somebody who starts the year the way he did is benched no for doubt. a game. Heisman seasons tend to be from start to finish magical rides. But in this day and age of the Heisman, who knows? Plus the voting's an absolute <laughs> joke and should be destroyed <laughs> and burnt to the ground. Sidebar. Aflac trivia question today. As the head coach of Alabama, Nick Saban only has three regular season losses to SEC East teams. Think about that. Who are they? I mean, this guy's 17 years coaching Alabama, and he's only lost three times in a regular season to an SEC East team. I got two of them. Well, one of them is fresh in everybody's memory. Right. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm good. Oh, now, wait, that wasn't the one you had? No, 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 I, I, I got it, I think. Sumo Karnbay goes straight ahead. He had a four-yard touchdown reception last week. He was high-pointing the ball in the end zone. Made a heck of a play. All right, so here are the answers, Jordan. You might give it a shot. Yeah, I was going to say Georgia, South Carolina, when I was in school at a good squad in 2010, I think it was. Yes, that's correct. And then Tennessee, obviously. Yeah, was last year. Oh, the throw. Now, here's the thing. The 07 team, obviously, that's Saban just getting his feet underneath him. That, that was. Well, that's Detroit that year. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Louisiana Monroe. Oh, that's right, yeah. And that was, I mean, it's the worst Alabama team he's ever totally. had, understandably, year number one. Then the other two are great, great programs at the time. And that's the Affleck trivia question answer. Leary trying to stay alive there and works his way back to the line of scrimmage. Tim Smith with the tackle. Here's that Georgia loss. Stafford obviously slinging the ball. And that was Alabama just getting started. Then Steven Garcia, Marshawn yes. Adamar, Alshon Jeffries, Stephon Gilmore on the other side of the ball. That was a team. And then, and then Chase McGrath last year with the ultimate the knuckler ball. The stars through. aligned there for Tennessee. I mean, that offense was clicking like never before. How about our visit with Coach Saban yesterday? We, he's, he can rattle off oh, every yeah. play that if just that play didn't happen, that play didn't happen. He brought up that game. He brought up the game last night when we were sitting with him. That's how much it stays in his mind. Third and seven. Larry backed up again, and it's incomplete. As Arnold was there. With coverage, Robinson was the intended target. Again, just 18 rushing yards today for Kentucky. And look, there is talent on the outside at receiver. Devin Leary is a really talented quarterback. But this offense does not work when the run game isn't rolling. It's so predicated on that, and that's what you're seeing. You're just seeing them out of rhythm. The normal throws and opportunities just haven't been there. Wilson Berry, the 25-year-old punter, is going to have a sore leg. This is his sixth punt of the afternoon. McKinstry calls for the fair catch at the 34-yard line. Helmet on the sidelines, was ready to rejoin his team on the football field. Nick Saban caught him just in time, said, nope, son, your day <laughs> is done. Six touchdowns, though. He wanted his seventh, guys. Yeah, uh, he's probably saying, hey, don't you remember what Tua did back in September of 2019 against Ole Miss when he had six passing and one rushing. I just need one more to tie Tua. So Ty Simpson comes in. Jam Miller, Miller on the carry. takes the carry. But Jalen Milrow's day was just superb. So impressive. Building off the performance gets LSU where he did it all with his legs. This time a lot of big plays with his arm. Saw one in rhythm. Won a second reaction play. Great ball downfield for the touchdown. And then anytime they've been in short yardage, you just can't stop him. They're so physical. But I love how he's done things with his arm outside the pocket, but also in rhythm at times. It's a complete performance from Jalen Milrow today.
So that's three quarters of stat gathering as Simpson's pass falls harmlessly to the ground. Robbie Utz was the intended target. And now it's all smiles for Jalen Milrow. Ty Simpson, his father Jason, head coach at UT Martin. Alabama 17 unanswered points in that sluggish win at USF. Third and 12. Simpson, plenty of time, and he gets the first down. Jalen Hale with the reception and good extra effort out past midfield. Well, and this is what Ty Simpson excels at. He is a great pocket passer. He's got a really talented, really accurate arm. And talking to Tommy Reese this spring, he said the one thing that he just needs to learn is when to hang in that pocket, not escape too early, not look at the rush, keep your eyes downfield. And that one there, great job of just hanging in a clean pocket and delivering a strike to the outside. Simpson. There's a good example of exactly what you're talking about to him. Yeah, it's just the arm talent, right? I mean, a much different quarterback than Jalen Milrow, right? He, he can get outside the pocket. He's not, not mobile, but he's not going to beat you with his legs. But that is what he'll do, deliver a strike on the run. And as a young quarterback, sometimes this is when you're at your best. When you're not thinking, you're just being an athlete. Great pickup there by the other true freshman there, Jalen Hale. He has big upside, number 14. It's been an assembly line of star wide receivers for many years at Alabama, and Hale could be one of the next great ones. Jay Miller, he is tripped up but falls ahead for a gain of about three. Rayner with the tackle. And again, important reps for Ty Simpson, right? Because I think he was in the middle of a quarterback competition all spring into fall camp. I think he believed he really had a, a shot to win it and then brings him back, like you mentioned, against South Florida. But then the job is taken away. And I think he's just felt like he needed an opportunity. You never know when that opportunity could come. It could come in an SEC championship, and you got to be ready. So valuable reps here. Was battered away. And remember in that week three game when Jalen Milrow was benched, it was Tyler Buckner who actually got the start. And he, yeah. and he struggled against USF. He was 5 of 14 passing. Then Simpson came into the game and rallied them for the win. But all offseason, people say, Milrow, yeah, we get it. Simpson, he's the more accurate guy with the arm. Buckner, though, knows the Tommy Reese system. And now you're sitting here with one of the best quarterbacks in college yeah. football, number four, with his helmet off, having a six touchdown paid in three quarters. Now and things change. Ty Buckner to the side there, the former Notre Dame quarterback. And obviously, I only reference the development of, of Simpson because you have a quarterback that runs so much. Yeah, right. I mean, puts himself at risk. So. You know, hopefully he stays healthy for the long run that Alabama has ahead of them. But in this league, you always got to have a guy that can help you win games as a backup. And Ty Simpson's on that way. Third down and eight for Bama. Pressure on Simpson. They pick it up. Simpson made a man miss and on the run before he has tripped up at his first and goal. So Ty Simpson himself showing the legs. Oh, he's trying to make me eat my words, right? For just a second ago saying, you know, he's, he's not not mobile, but great job here again, stepping up in the pocket. One of the few Kentucky blitzes we've seen all night is a team that doesn't blitz a lot. Trying to dial up a little pressure to shake the young quarterback, but great decision there by Simpson. Redshirt freshman, his father coaches UT Martin. Went head to head with Milrow for this quarterback position. Now, after that shaky September for everybody involved in the Bama offense. On the defense, number four. Half the distance to go, end the run. Automatic first down. Here they are at this critical juncture, the defining time in the sport. And they are bringing this in for a nice, easy landing and an SEC West championship. 
Milrow finishes with 234 yards passing and three passing touchdowns. And then seven carries with three rushing touchdowns. First and goal, Miller straight ahead and just add to it. The tide is indeed rolling. Well, the physicality up front's been really impressive, right? Just the last, I don't know, since the middle of the second quarter, you felt like this offensive line started to hit their stride. And it's a big physical Kentucky defensive front that is stout, that is tough to move, but open up some big holes for Jan Miller, Jace McClellan, and Roydo Williams. It's a good kick out by Tyler Booker, the pulling guard on the left side from New Haven, Connecticut, and then made his way to IMG Academy in Florida. Just 6'5", 350. Yeah, exactly. That's all. Yeah. And that is how we got the day started as senior coordinating producer Baron Miller put that together working with the Army this week, both on SEC Nation and then to open up our broadcast, Jordan. You were up there flying with those flying Tigers. Unreal experience. We'll say, too, they gave us a little uh, a little ride to start it. We hovered off the ground just a little bit, and that thing just took off. I mean, I was not ready for it. I had to check my seatbelt once or twice. Matt Berry, what do you got? Just have to be sitting back and saying, in big spots, can I we know. please score? College football playoff rankings are brought to you by Prudential. Of course, the CFP path. We've had nine years of the CFP, 36 teams, 15 undefeated, 21 one-loss teams, never a two-loss team. And of course, Bama, a one-loss team, unbeaten in the SEC and hoping to be an SEC champion. Ramon Jefferson with the carry. It's a great run by Jefferson. A little fourth quarter spark for the Cats as he's taken down and tracked down by the always hustling Caleb Downs. Boy, not much there. I mean, the initial blocking was just okay, but bad tackling leans on the back. And Christian Story here comes in number four and just uh, overruns the ball a little bit. I tell you what, there's nothing that'll get Nick Saban fired up more than that right there. You see in the progressive pylon cam, almost taking it all the way. So a 74-yard run by Jefferson. And he couldn't get the payoff, and the ball may have come out at the end there. Was he down, or did Alabama just recover the fumble with Christian Story claiming that? I think that's out. It looked like it was out. And again, I just mentioned that Christian Story, who was filling in for the injured Jalen Key at safety, Missed the tackle on the previous play. Look at this. Oh, That's yeah, it's out. That's a fumble and a fumble recovery by Christian Story and did it all on his own. Wow. You're going to fire up Nick Saban. Now you're going to make him a little happy. By the way, put that on the tape for youth football oh. as to how to do it. Shoulder right on the ball, leverage at the goal line. This should be Alabama football. Yeah, Instead, it's Kentucky trying to get it in. I cannot believe they're not reviewing that. I don't care that it's 49-14. Just officiate the game properly. How did they not... How do they not go back and look at this? Watch the knees. Watch the shoulder. I mean, it's it's close, but from you got to look at angle, it, right? Yeah, from the other angle, it looks like that ball starts to move right there. See, look, it's between his legs there already. I don't know. That's maybe it's simultaneous there. I get a little carried away there, Tess. Third and goal. Davis straight ahead and in for the touchdown. Ray Davis scores again. A one-yard touchdown run for Ray Davis, his second of the day. And we told you one of the great stories of college football from everything he overcame as a youngster growing up in the Bay Area where he was bouncing in and out of foster care to Laura Banks and Greg Lay, who became his temporary gardens in 2016 and turned his life around, gave him opportunity that has led him now to be a Vanderbilt graduate and a Kentucky football star as a transfer. And you love rooting for guys that not only are just good at football, but just good human beings, right? The character of him, the work ethic, the humility. You spend a little time around Ray Davis. There's... Well, a one-loss Texas is the team that people point to and say, oh, that could be an issue for a one-loss Alabama yeah. team. But Kendrick Law on the return. 
Here's the one thing I know. If you get an undefeated Georgia against this Alabama team playing for the SEC, I don't care. There's no discussion for me to be had. But you know the history of in the CFP era of early season losses that can be dismissed. Well, I think that's why we went to this type of model, right? Because you want to be able to appreciate the teams can get better. They can lose early and circumstances and players and teams get better and things change. And nobody exemplifies that more than this Alabama team right here. Now, are they not night and day different right now than they were against Texas week two? Oh, absolutely. It's I mean, not it's, even the same. No. I mean, the, the quarterback position is just miles and miles beyond what it was back then. This is Justice Haynes, a true freshman running back. And then, all right, so you think about Oregon as a one-loss team. You think about Texas. And let's say everybody wins out and you get to these championship games. I think Alabama would benefit from Oregon topping Washington, Oregon winning, they'd have a resume that tops a one-loss Oregon team, even an Oregon team that's wildly respected, because that would be an Alabama team that's then defeating potentially an undefeated Georgia team. That's the trump card, right? right. I mean, that's the ultimate trump card. Totally. It's the best you know, win that, in football. It would be at the most pivotal time as well. Haynes again, Justice Haynes. He is an ultra-talented true freshman. You talk to those around the program about this running back group, McClellan, Williams, Miller, Haynes. And they'll always finish every conversation saying, well, Haynes may be the most talented. Yeah, and, and Saban didn't shy away from that even back in the spring when we were here around the program. I think him developing as a guy that can be a three down back, right? Be good in pass protection, be good out of the backfield. I mean, he is a an electric ball carrier, a physical bowling ball that gets going downhill. He'll make you miss as well. And as he develops into a guy that can do everything, even on a third down, he's going to continue to fight his way into this lineup. Ty Simpson has been in at quarterback for a while now as Milrow was taken out after his six touchdown day. Milrow finished with 240 yards. There he is, all smiles for Jalen. Three touchdowns, passing. And then seven rushes that accounted for three rushing touchdowns. That's pretty good odds, right? Almost one out of every two times sure. he touched the ball. Last week it was four rushing touchdowns. By the way, Michigan has defeated Penn State. For those tuning over here to Alabama, Kentucky, seeing the end of this, it has been all Bama all day with Milrow as the star quarterback, six touchdowns. And again, it, he's not going to get three or four rushing touchdowns every single game, but this is an aspect of the offense that is going nowhere. Leaning on his athleticism and his ability to run the football to set up those play action passes and those shot plays downfield. Richard Young just carried it for three yards. Now Haynes back into the game. Justice Haynes, and he will have another first down for Alabama as that clock continues to roll down. The continued evolution of Jalen Milrow from, you know, an elite athlete playing quarterback to now a quarterback that happens to be an elite athlete. Yeah, and a leader that's developing, right? That's It's not in his DNA to be super outspoken or outgoing, and that's okay. You don't have to always be as a quarterback, but he is taking ownership of that. As you see him talking to a couple of his tight ends right now, he has become more of a vocal leader. Came out of his shell a little bit because he realized that this team needed that out of him. Haynes getting a lot of work here late. As he goes inside the 40. Women's college basketball has a triple header tomorrow. Maryland, South Carolina is on ABC at 1. UConn and NC State at 3. And then at 5 on ESPN, number 9 Indiana, number 15 Stanford. That's the triple header tomorrow. Ray Davis, his day was only 26 yards. Did have a couple of touchdowns, but for Kentucky to find any rhythm on offense, they need that rushing game, and they just couldn't get it against that Alabama defensive front. Young. This carry goes for a couple of yards. Now I want to talk to you about Ole Miss and Georgia tonight, Jordan. 
We spent last week with Ole Miss. You know what they're capable of doing. Georgia's defense doesn't have Jamon Dumas Johnson, the outstanding linebacker. He suffered a fractured forearm against Mizzou. How does that change the complexion of the game? Well, it's huge. Similar to not having Deontay Lawson today is Jamon Dumas Johnson is the quarterback of that defense. He's calling out everything. And when it's a team like Ole Miss, unlike Kentucky that goes so much tempo and unbalance and movement, that puts a lot of stress on that position. Now, I'm going to follow that up with the fact that Georgia's recruited pretty well. Pretty? Yeah. I mean, you know, so the drop-off is not going to be super substantial. But I just look at this Ole Miss team, and I think they're so much different than what we saw against Alabama earlier in the season. Jackson Dark playing at such a higher level. Quinshawn Judkins looking like one of the best guys in the country once again after a slow start. They can find a way to jump out early and make this a game. There and, is a path to victory. And they have a clear number one receiver. Yes. In Trey a dude, Harris. Trey Harris. Is, I felt like last week we were calling that game against AM. Every other play, we're just, I mean, jaw dropping catches from Trey Harris. Jaw dropping incompletions on catches yeah. he was making out of bounds. But again, there's a reason Georgia's won 43 of 44. So you have to be perfect against him. Fourth and three, Simpson, and he gets it complete. Heck of a play that time by Ty Simpson to get that ball complete as he's able to find Kisselman. That might be a little pass interference on the offense. Pass interference, defense number 13. Oh, defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat fourth down. Both guys tangled up. I wasn't sure who they were going to call it on. It almost looked like the Alabama receiver was trying to block. I know they're closing out the game here, not a crisis point in the game, but that was just the third time this season that Bama's gone for it on fourth down. The total antithesis of everything Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss's yeah. offenses that we were just discussing. And it was on the offense. So they will send the punt team in. There's going to be a lot of people. Listen, we brought it up, and I don't want to get into the conversation of what could go all over the place here, but even the fact that you could pose the question of Heisman for Jalen Milrow, even the fact that question can come up, well, I think it's is how astounding the year is. And also because no one has really taken complete control of that conversation, right? Jaden Daniels had a chance to, and he's still in that Michael conversation. Penix. Had a chance last week, yep. but Milrow bested him. More to discuss as we wrap things up here. Final minute and a half. A good ball game. South Carolina took it to my doors today. Yes, they did. Oh, my gosh. And there is Devin Leary, who, of course, will try to reset things for that showdown against South Carolina. Today was 17 of 31, 158 yards, a touchdown interception, and was sacked three times. I felt like he was under pressure a heck of a lot. Didn't have much of a chance, right? No run game, no protection. It was a real, real tough day for this Kentucky offense as a whole. Kaya Sharon is in at quarterback as Sumo Kongbe just takes the carry. Final minute. You know, we keep discussing this Alabama team and how they have blossomed into what is really the way you always think of Alabama. A team that has dangerous weapons on offense. Holding offense number 73. 10-yard penalty, previous spot. Repeat second down. Has a now franchise-type quarterback in a different way yeah. than what we've seen in recent years. Milrow has clearly developed into that. A well-coached defense with Amazing edge rusher, stout on the interior, and supreme talent in the defensive backfield. And they did it all today without their top linebacker, Deontay right. Lawson, without Key on the back end. And, oh, by the way, we didn't really mention it because of how good Milrow was. Jermaine Burton didn't yes. play today. Their best wide receiver. And you go on the road, put 49 points up against a, a stingy Kentucky defense and team that is always a tough out. Jermaine Burton, who went for 197 yards. Nine catches against AM this year. So they'll get healthy. Obviously, next week we put up that promo. And I know people hate when, when you call it Cupcake Saturday, yeah. but that's what it is. It is. It's a get healthy week next week. But this is an Alabama team that has done it again.
They are the SEC West Kings. They're going to play for the conference championship. And they've got a great story at quarterback with a dynamic weapon in Jalen Milrow. The Tide, your SEC West champs for the 15th time in school history. Katie. Thanks, Tess. Coach Saban, with today's win, you clinched the SEC West title, something you've done many times before. What does it mean to do it with this group in particular? Well, you know, no matter how many times you've done it before, you're happy for the group of guys, what they've done, how they've improved, how they've worked hard all year. I'm really proud of this group, man. I love this group, this team. Um, so hopefully we just keep learning and getting better. It gives us an opportunity to play for the SEC championship. Jalen Milrow had another incredible performance. Can you put in perspective the growth and development that we've seen from him over the course of the season? Well, he's done a great job. You know, he stayed very positive about what he needed to learn to improve and grow and get better and uh, learned how to play the next play, and he's done a fantastic job for us. And I think the team has a lot of confidence in him. He's become a leader, and uh, we're really excited that he's given us an opportunity to get where we want to go. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. All about the opportunities. Nick Saban always reminds them of that. He said this week, it's time to make a choice. Who knows what happens from here? What happens right now is you play for the SEC championship. Jalen Milrow was the star, Katie. Yes, he was, Tess. Jalen, you're the first player in Alabama history to account for three passing and three rushing touchdowns. When you think about this season and the way you're playing right now, what makes you most proud? What makes me most proud is the how much uh, we have to go through as far as the adversity and our grit. Um, I think that's the biggest thing about this football team is that we have not given up. Um, with all the things that we've gone through, I think I'm, just, I'm just having fun with the guys. That's, that's pretty much what has gone, gone on to. And then we'll also with Coach Saban and Coach Reese trusting in me to play the position. So uh, I thank them um, to allow me to perform and allow me to be the best quarterback I can be. You told me this week your greatest strength is your mental and physical toughness. How's that left thigh? It hurts, but hey, <laughs> the biggest thing was, was getting the win and playing the guys and doing my job as much as possible. Um, so the thigh will be all right. It was all about winning. Have fun in a couple weeks in Atlanta. Thank you. Roll Tide. Oh, they're rolling, Jalen. Don't you worry about that.